which is quite expensive by the way, right? If you're looking at the day optic plus the thermal and just compare it to the adder. The adder is going to do better. <laughs> everybody welcome to the AGM table talks uh, video series so this is a new video series we're gonna start doing um, the idea being that these are more uh, they're, they're less formal they're more of a discussion um, so I'm Randy with AGM I've got Justin here with me uh, we're both guys on the marketing team and the idea behind this whole series is for us to really just have discussions about popular topics that we come across in thermal and night vision, in the thermal and night vision space. So as we started talking about, you know, different kind of content that we could share with you guys, we, we kind of had this idea. One of the topics that came to mind, because we get it so often, was whether or not you should go with a thermal clip-on device or a thermal scope. So on like many of the, the guns behind me here, these are all thermal scopes. We've got some thermal clip-ons in front of us and we go to a lot of shows, um, a lot of demos and we talk to a lot of people and it's very common, especially for new people getting into thermal, for them to ask that question. Should I get a thermal clip-on device or th should I get a, a thermal scope? Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've got my own perspective on that. Uh, I've been kind of in the thermal night vision space uh, prior to getting this job, and I've been here for a year and a half or so. And you know, I've been in the industry for a good long time, so I've I've had an opportunity to play with this different things at different points in my career. Um, and so I've got my own kind of take on it. Justin, though, um, correct me if I'm wrong. You really, I mean, you're an industry guy, but the first time you dabbled with thermal and night vision was. Well, at least dabbled more hard was when you got this job, right? Yeah, pretty much. Being in the industry, you get to play with things a little bit here and there, and it's just a novelty. But like really diving in and learning about and experiencing it, yeah, just the last six or seven months since being here. So it'd be interesting then it, for you to maybe answer the question, just as a general make, like rule, what do you prefer? Uh, thermal. You, you've had the opportunity to look through both. We've done lots of content shots. We've done lots of things. Um, what's your take? So <clears throat> if you would have asked me earlier on, I would have gone with, I, I probably would have said the clip-on route. Um, but having been in this for you know a few months and playing with it, experiencing it, and seeing what a lot of other people do, um, I would say, especially because I'm a gun guy. I have a, I have a few rifles around a few different setups um, and so I would just get a dedicated scope and have a gun dedicated set up to that that's at this point that's what I would do so why why you said at the beginning um, and I think that's honestly consistent with lots of people that I talk to um, a lot of people come in to thermal um, maybe thinking they want to clip on mm -hmm. and not that clip ons don't have their place they, they absolutely do um, but just, just as like full disclosure, we, we probably sell way more scopes than we do clip-ons. Uh, you probably talk to any one of our dealers and they would tell you the same thing. Um, why did you reach that conclusion? So I think that, I mean, this is the reason that it's like the age old question. It's what, why we get asked this so much is that I think that the, the concept of a clip-on is objectively really, really cool. The idea that you can take your gun, that like you, you already love that build, you have it set up just the way you want it, and basically in like the matter of a moment, you can put your clip on on the rail and now you're, now you're thermal through your, your go-to optic. Yeah. That, that idea is really, really cool. It's very like... Uh, it's modular. Feel, yeah, it's very modular and, it, and it's, it, it seems so simple to get to like a much more elevated place. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I think a lot of the like, uh, from like a tactical standpoint, somebody who's more interested in like tactical style shooting or shooting for like, um, you know, more of a tactical purpose, less of like, oh, I have my hunting rifle. Sure. I think there's a, a lot of appeal to that idea. But you start doing it, you start learning it, you start experiencing it, and you learn that like, Oh, it's not that simple. There's there's more to it. You can't you can't necessarily just toss the clip on on and like tighten it down and like you're good to go. Eventually, um, 
you, I think you, you touch on a, a point that I think is probably a big misconception because you do bring up a good point. I mean, you've got rigs like this, and when we're talking about clip-ons, we're essentially talking about, with AGM, this one here, which is the Rattler, and then this one here, which is the Sting IR. So this is helmet mounted. This is, you can hold it on your hand. You can actually, there's even a reticle profile. You can have this be its own scope, or you can put it dot. in clip-on mode, right? They both, both clip-on systems are going to work much more, uh, more ideal with LPVOs, that lower magnification range, just because you are zooming into a screen. So I think that's one misconception. I get a lot of people who ask, and the ideal gun that they're talking about using a clip-on for is their like hunting rifle, and maybe they're running like a five power scope to 25 or something, and if you're already starting off at five power, you're already like really punched into the, the display screen, so you, you're starting to see the pixels, um, and it's maybe not the ideal setup. But if you do put the clip-on device on your gun, a big misconception is that a lot of people I don't think realize that you still have to collimate it, right? There is no guarantee. When I've got the day optic zeroed, right? Um, point of aim, point of impact, I've figured that out for this. When I put this unit on the rifle, um, and some of them you can clamp to the scope, but regardless how you mount to it, as soon as you mount it, there's no guarantee just out yeah. of the box that this camera lens essentially, right? The, the pointing direction of the front lens is going to align perfectly with whatever your zero was, right? Yeah. It's just not gonna be the case, right? Your, your, everything goes into play on that, like your weapon system, the, the, the gun you're using, the rail you're using. So just like scopes, you have to collimate it. So you've gotta align the screen, and there's a function inside the menu to allow you to do that, but you've gotta center the screen. I don't think a lot of people realize that's kind of a one and done thing. And once you center the screen, you can like, you know, you've got these high end mounts, this ADM mount on here. You can like, okay, I've got my clip on dialed in and I've, I've, I've got it ready to go on my gun. Now you can say, look, I'm running my day rifle and I'm gonna throw on my clip on. The downside is it's really only good for that gun. Mm -hmm. Whereas a thermal scope, you've got like 20, 25 reticle like zeroing profiles. So you could throw your thermal scope on, you could have multiple zeros on the same gun, but you could also pass it around on different guns and just swap your zero by pushing a button. Yeah, caliber to caliber, gun to gun, yeah. distance to distance. Yeah. You're not saving any money either, right? I think that's another big one. Uh, you go to a thermal scope, a thermal clip on, uh, the price isn't determined by whether or not it's a scope or a clip on as much. It's really more determined by the quality of the image that you're going for. So what would you say the ideal clip-on setup would be? I mean, I, I think that um, we had a great example just a couple weeks ago. We had some buddies from another company. They were going out for like a content shoot weekend. They were going to be doing a coyote hunt, um, but they're not like, they don't do that all the time. So they have guns set up, ready to go. Um, so. I just got the guy a clip on, you know, he had a, he had an AR built out really well, good to go. I would put the clip on in front of his LPVO, which was already zeroed, ready to go. And so he was able to take his gun that he's super used to, take it out on this hunt. It was simple. It worked really well for him for that occasion. Um, and then obviously when he was done, he was able to take that off give it back to us. Right. And his gun was right back to its original state. He can go shoot it in all of the other, uh, all the other ways that he uses that gun way more often yeah. than he's using it for night hunting. Yeah, I mean, to echo that, right? Like this is one of of my setups that I love, but this is kind of a a do all setup for a lot of different things. It's more geared towards night shooting with night vision. Um, and this is not a setup I'm gonna change. So l like this, if you've got a gun, if you've got a setup where like, I'm not gonna be taking things on and off. And I ideally use this for a whole bunch of other roles. Throwing something on in front of the LPVO to now give me that extra capability, that's pretty cool. Really that's cool. very cool, that's very useful. But if I had to say, would I, if I was going, like out here it's a lot of coyote hunting. In my experience it's a lot of coyote hunting. I've done some hog hunting as well. Um, if I had to stack this setup, which is quite expensive, by the way, right? If you're looking at the day optic plus the thermal. 
and just compare it to the adder. The adder is going to do better. <laughs> like it's just going to be better. It's going to shine. Right? For it's sure, yeah. it's going to have for the most part more capability in the, in the unit by itself. The image is going to be a little bit cleaner in my opinion rather than looking through the the eyepiece of your day optic onto the 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 screen. You're just looking in, you know, through the regular eyepiece on a thermal scope. Um, Digital zooming, essentially that's the same. The difference is I don't see actual pixels. The image just gets more pixelated. It's less clear, yeah. Right? Um, but the adder's probably going to outperform this, um, especially when we're talking about base magnification. All clip-ons come with kind of a one-power base mag, right? The adder, depending on which model you get or the Rattler, you could start out with three-power, four-power, whatever. So you're already punched in enough, and that gives you better detection range, better capability. So like, if it was like, hey, you wanna go coyote hunting? And this is all I got. Hey, I got something, I can make this work. Mm -hmm. But ideally, if I got a different gun that's got a thermal scope on it, that's going to perform better for me. And like nine times out of 10. Yeah, and I mean, all our guys in Texas who are shooting hogs all the time, Yep. everybody has a dedicated setup. Like, I mean, if that's, that's, that's where you live, that's what you do, that's something you have to deal with, a problem you have to deal with frequently, Yeah, you're gonna have a dedicated setup. It's natural progression of things, right? Yeah. In this industry, uh, I mean, even with ARs, sometimes people like the idea like, yeah, I can build an upper a certain way or a certain caliber. Well, then eventually you buy a lower. And then eventually you just have this whole dedicated gun. Yeah. I, you see the same thing with optics, right? A lot of optics have QD levers. The idea being like with the mount, you could toss it between different guns. I don't know a lot of people who actually do that. They, they usually just buy a quality optic mount and then it just stays on that gun. And the case in the thermal industry is the same. Yeah. So. so I think, I mean, there's a really cool application, especially from like the guys who are getting into thermal and getting into night vision from like more of the tactical world, the guys who like to like be ready for anything, have that one like kind of do it all build that you sure. might need in case of an emergency or whatever. And so you wanna have some thermal capability for that build just in case or something like that. There's some great applications there. If you're somebody who every once in a while, like your buddy's gonna take you out coyote hunting or whatever, um, there's some Great application there as well. Toss toss on the clip on, and you can use your rifle. Yeah. Um, but if you're somebody who's like, yeah, I'm getting into night hunting, there's a great argument to be made for just going with a dedicated scope and yeah. having that having that rifle set up ready to go, and it's always going to be ready to go. Nothing's going to change. You have all of your zero profiles in there, uh, and it's a really a very capable uh, yeah. option. So that that's that's my take. I think. That's generally the take. Uh, you guys, if you like this video, leave a comment, let us know. Um, we're gonna do more of these videos in the future, uh, table talks, and uh, you got anything else to add? Um, I mean, for the sake of the video, any of you guys who have more experience with this stuff, uh, who've gone back and forth, who've used th this stuff a lot, um, you know, this is, this is our take, but we'd love to, uh, we'd love more insight or more experience. Anyone else who has some, some comments about this, kind of this comparison or that question, do I go with the scope, do I go with the clip-on? Uh, go ahead, put that stuff down in the comments too. That's it. Awesome. See you guys next time.